In the last presentation, we have understood how to input a list using split method. Now in this presentation, we will understand how to input a list using split method and loops. So without any further delay, let's get started. The first topic of this presentation is basics of for loop. The second topic is accepting a list using split and for loop. Let's first understand the basics of for loop. So what is a for loop and what it does? For loop is used to repeat a specific code a certain number of times. We need to understand this that if we want to repeat a specific piece of code a number of times that we want, we can use the concept of for loop. So for loop allows us to repeat a certain piece of code a certain number of times. Let's open our command prompt and activate the Python interactive shell. In order to understand how for loop works, we will now consider a very simple example. Let's together type this command for i in range 0, 3 and then colon. Don't worry about this command for now. Let's type the next statement first and then we will understand how this works. Let's hit enter. We will get three dots which means that we need to write at least one statement within this for loop. For this, we first have to add an indentation here and then we type this command, print hello world. Now let's understand how this for loop works. Here we have for i in range 0, 3. What does it mean? We have this range function which receives two arguments 0 and 3. And range function returns a sequence of numbers depending upon the arguments you provide to it. So if the arguments are m and n, range function will return the sequence from m to n minus 1. In this case, m is 0 and n is 3. So range function will return values 0, 1 and 2, not 3, because the last value is always n minus 1. So we need to subtract 1 here. So range function in this case will return 0, 1 and 2. Eventually those values will be received by variable i and that too one at a time. So first time i will receive value 0. After receiving that value, we can go inside this for loop and this statement will be printed, hello world. This means that print function will be evaluated. Then we need to get back here and i will now receive the next value that is 1. After receiving that value, we again need to go inside and print hello world. Then again we need to get back and i will receive value 2 this time. Then again we need to go inside and print hello world. Again we need to get back but this time i will not receive the next value because we do not have any other value apart from 0, 1 and 2. As range function has returned 0, 1 and 2, so i will only receive these values that is 0, 1 and 2. This means that this for loop will print this statement three times. I hope the idea is clear that with the help of this for loop, we would be able to print this statement three times. So it is clear that for loop is used to repeat a specific code a certain number of times. So whenever we want to repeat a statement or a set of statements some number of times, we can do that using for loop. Let's say we are interested in repeating a specific statement n number of times, then in place of 3 here, we must add n. Then the loop will run n times. I hope with this, the idea of for loop is clear. Now let's hit enter and hit enter again to see the output we will get hello world three times. The reason why we are getting this is because the range function has returned three values 0, 1 and 2 and because of this, the for loop will run three times and this means that this print statement will be executed three times. So for now, this is all we need to understand about for loop. Now, let's move on to the next topic that is accepting a list using split and for loop. In the last presentation, we have understood how to accept a list using split method. We have received a list using split method 
but that list consists of strings and not integers. This is the problem we were facing in the last presentation. We have successfully received a list using split method, but we have received a list of strings and not a list of integers. Now we will understand how to leverage the power of for loop to convert individual items of the list to integers. Let's see how. For this again we need to open our command prompt and now we need to understand how to accept a list using both split and for loop. First we will accept a list using split and then we will use for loop to convert each item of the list to integer. How to do this? Let's first receive the number of elements from the user. We have already learned how to receive the number of elements from the user. Let's type this command n equal to int input enter the number of elements. With this command we would be able to receive the number of elements from the user. We know that input function will receive input from the user and return it as a string. We eventually want to convert that to integer. That is why this type casting is needed. Eventually n will point to an integer value which is received from the user. Let's hit enter. We'll get this prompt enter the number of elements. Let's type 4. This means that n will now point to value 4. Let's hit enter again. As we are receiving this prompt, this means that everything is working correctly. Now let's receive a series of inputs from the user. We want to store those inputs inside the list. For this we will use the split method. We have already learned how to do this in the last presentation. So it is important to watch the previous lecture before moving on to this lecture. I am not going to explain the command that I am going to type here as we have already learned this in the last presentation. So that is why watching the previous lecture is important. Now let's type this command to accept a list from the user. Let's type numbers equal to input into the numbers then dot split. Let's hit enter. We'll get this prompt enter the numbers. Let's type these numbers 67, 80, 95 and 5. These numbers will be received by numbers variable as a list. But we will receive the list of strings and not integers. This is what we have seen in the last presentation. We will receive these items as strings and not integers. Now we will use the power of for loop to convert these strings to integers. Let's see how. Let's hit enter and type for i in range 0, n. We know that value of n is 4. So eventually this will be replaced by 4. This means that we want to run our for loop 4 times. As we know that there are a total of 4 items in this list and we want to convert each item to an integer, therefore the loop must run 4 times. And this is the reason why we need to provide n as the second argument to this range function. It totally depends on the value of n. Now it might be possible that the user has entered 5 in place of 4. Then in that case the for loop must run 5 times. Because then we need to convert 5 different items to integers. I hope this idea is clear. Now let's hit enter. And let's add one statement inside this for loop. For this we first have to add the indentation and then this statement numbers i equal to int numbers i. This statement is required to convert each item of the list to an integer. How? Let's understand this complete for loop. We know that for the first time i will receive value 0. We'll get inside this for loop and we will replace i by 0 here. Eventually we will receive string 67 here. Why is that the case? Because numbers i will be replaced by numbers 0 because i is 0 for the first time. Number 0 means that we want to access the first item of the numbers list which is string 67. So eventually numbers 0 will be replaced by string 67 and with the help of this int function we can convert that string to integer. 
So eventually, this int numbers i will be replaced by value 67. And the statement will look like numbers 0 equal to 67. This means that the string 67 will be replaced by integer 67. As with the help of assignment operator, we want to assign integer 67 to numbers 0. That is, we want to replace the string 67 by integer 67. I hope this idea is completely clear now. Now convince yourself that each item in this list will be converted to integer with the help of this for loop. The second time when we enter this for loop, i value will be 1. So this is numbers 1 equal to int numbers 1. This numbers 1 will be replaced by string 80 as this is the second item of the list and with the help of int function, we would be able to convert that string to integer. So eventually we will get 80 here and with the help of assignment operator, numbers 1 will receive integer 80. This means that this string 80 will be replaced by integer 80. In this way, the rest of the values will be converted to integers. And this means that we will eventually receive the list of integers. I hope with this, it is clear how to convert each item of the list to an integer. Let's hit enter and hit enter again. Let's type numbers to see whether numbers variable has received the list of integers or not. Let's hit enter again. We'll get this list with a total of 4 items, 67, 80, 95 and 5. And now these items are integers and not strings. So with this we have understood how to accept a list using split and for loop. This means that we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.